<laughs> a little bit of an afternoon delay. Um, my name is Megan Reichels. I'm Valerie Lemkenico. Christopher Lauer. And we are here to talk to you about fake news, which uh, has always been important, but seems to be just in increasingly important as the, the deadline for elections loom. Um, so kind of we're looking at um, fake news kind of within that light. Um, so I want to get to know you all a little bit and what brought you to the workshop. So if you could go around and just say your name and who you are and start with you. Uh, I'm Kate. I'm a graduate student and, and I am studying like the big person and reading education. Oh, wow. And then I got interested in like critical big person. So we read a lot, but it's a weird thing to find out or not. That's why I I missed the last part of what you said because of okay. the loud noises. Can you? <laughs> okay, so I have an interest in critical thinking. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think it's really important to figure out which is true or which is not. We yeah. read a lot, but some of them are not the true. Exactly. Right? Okay, great. Well, that's, that's really exciting. I hope that we're able to give you some new stuff to work with. How about you? I'm Colleen. I work here at the Library and Access Services. Right. And, um, this just sounded like a really interesting workshop. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. I'm Stacey Marek Simpkins. I'm in the English department. Cool. But on a personal level, I mean, I read all the time, and it's just good to have as much knowledge as is possible. I think I'm getting much better, but they're recognizing it almost instantly, but then there are times when I don't. Mm -hmm. So it's just getting as much perspective and learning as I can. Exactly. Well, that's great. Good. I hope we're able to, to give you some more tools. So I'm David. I also work in the library. So I'm on the teaching and learning team with a team up there. Um, I'm really interested in misinformation. I just did a presentation on it. Hopefully I'm going to learn some more things here today, too. Also, seeing how the hybrid workshop thing works out. So I'm here for a lot of, a lot of different reasons. Yes. So. Do we have anybody online? Yes, so we have Hannah McLaughlin online, and she works downstairs in the Spark Lab, and then she loves that we do this workshop in the library, so wants to join in. All right. Hi, Hannah. Um, cool. So, great. So we're going to start this out by playing a game called Fake or Real. I'm going to show you a little snippet of a news article, and you have to tell me whether or not you think it is fake or real. Gold. We have gold. <laughs> um, uh, after today, you will be able to examine personal and unconscious bias, which is probably a huge part of, of where we get our, our fake news tendencies. Um, uh, determine accuracy and or bias within news media. Uh, and then identify sources that can help you learn more information about a news source. Um, to get that clean diet. All right, now we're going to play fake or real. I'm, I'm going back and forth between two computers, one for my notes, one for this, so bear with me. All right, fake or real, gunman demands chicken sandwich from Texas Popeyes, leaves empty and hungry. Do you think it is fake or real? Real. Real? Why? Well, it looks like it's Washington, or Channel 4, uh -huh. news. Mm -hmm. I heard this this story that it was. Oh, I you know what? I take that back. It's probably fake. Why? Because it's it was Chickasville where that actual story happened. Chickasville? Yeah, they they came out with that chicken sandwich. It was supposed to be this phenomenal thing. Was it Chick Fil A? Chick Fil A. <laughs> Chick Fil A. Yeah, no, it's fine. I was just like, is there another one? Mm -hmm. I didn't know about. Um. So there, there is that that recent story about the the person who killed a guy in line, not for a chicken sandwich. For the chicken sandwich was supposed to be phenomenal, and they they had way too many people, and they didn't have enough of the new chicken sandwich. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen. Any other thoughts on that? Is it fake or real? Stay real. Stay real. So we have a real that turned into fake. We have a real. You think it's real? Okay. Why? I have a usage for this one. Yeah. Yeah. So one thing that is is really difficult with things like this is 
oftentimes if, if we hear it somewhere, we don't remember where we heard it, but then we see it again and we're like, oh yeah, I heard that somewhere. So it must, like it, it reinforces itself. However, in the case of this, it is actually real. Um, but the title is really clickbaity, right? Um, do you guys want to talk about, you found this, right? You found I found this one. You found this one, you want to talk about it? Um, yeah, so this one is a real story, but the part about like the leaves and being hungry is a little exaggerated. Um, he did have a gun on him, but it wasn't like he was holding people hostage in a Popeyes. It was like a man with a gun goes to Popeyes and does not get a chicken sandwich, and they turned it into this. Kind of story. Yeah. So the NBC logo is definitely a clue for some of you, right? But you have to be careful with things like this for, for counterfeit because it's very easy for me to do a screenshot like we did. We did a screenshot of this. Take that and stick it on the top of whatever I'm posting. Um, there are also, well, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, also over here, this is a good indicator. It's an associated press photo, which means that the photo comes from the Associated Press, but again, you have to make sure to follow all those trails to make sure that this is a legitimate Associated Press photo. Um, anything else you want to talk about about that one? Next. Boom. Trump's grandfather was a pimp and tax evader, his father a member of the KKK. <laughs> Fake or real? I'll just say that to me, this seems fake. Uh -huh. uh, things that are indicating that to me, I don't know what the AH Tribune is, and it might be a paper mm -hmm. that like I would be aware of the way that I would have been Channel Four, like we were just talking about. That's one clue, and the title <laughs> is. Um, it seems to me it's either exaggerating actual reality, the way that the previous one was, mm -hmm. or it's just like completely made up mm -hmm. stuff. Seems cool. A little hard to see. Yeah. Interesting. Other thoughts? Fake or real? I think we cannot say it's a fake or real because so that is such a literal like clue. Mm -hmm. How we can judge if it's true or not? It's true, but how often is this what we see of the news? Like we're scrolling through through Facebook, our friend has posted right. something like this, and we see this and we pass by, but we absorb it into our brain. Um, and we're like, oh my gosh, this thing happened. I keep scrolling. We don't actually dive in further. So you're absolutely right that in order to figure this out, uh, we would need to do a little further investigating. But that's why I want to play this game because this is how often, how we often see it. Um, so it is fake, but it is um, the most viewed of all the fake, the most viewed of all the fake news, all the fake news when last year, last year, 2019, 2019. The most viewed of all the fake news uh, in 2019 with 29,202,552 estimated views um, and 1,638,165 interactions. Um, so there's views and then the interactions are shared. Um, you want to talk about this a little more? Uh, it's just this one was the most viewed fake news article of uh, 2019 and it was not just that it was any kind of like political side that was doing it it was so many people that it was just everyone was sharing this and it showed up just like this I took this exactly from the Facebook post that had it and I mean I took off like all the comments underneath it <laughs> Um, but it would be just like, it was just like this on Facebook. Yeah. And it is an example of, uh, potentially, th though you do say that, that people of all stripes shared it, if you were inclined to think that Trump was a bad person, you would be more inclined to just be like, haha, here's proof, look at this. Um, and so Trump's, uh, grandfather did have, um, 
prostitution potentially in one of his hotels, but a lot of hotels are hosts to prostitution and he was not like involved directly. Um, so it is taking something and is stretching it so far to make it fake news. This one, fake snow, this one, there we go. <laughs> Too many computers. FBI agent suspected in Hillary email leaks found dead in apparent murder-suicide. Fake or real? I think it's fake. Why? Well, for one thing, the Denver Guardian, I've never heard of before. It's, there's a lot of these, there's, there was actually a list this mm -hmm. past year of all these publications which were Russian bots, mm -hmm. and they would often mimic names of legitimate newspapers. They could be so close mm -hmm. to the real newspaper yep. that you had to really, really look hard. And um, this is one of those that I don't remember if it's on the list, but it seems, I mean, it seems like it's um, somebody mixed up Denver Guardian and the Guardian newspaper and some Denver newspaper mm -hmm. together to create this inflammatory article. Mm -hmm. And that is absolutely what happened. Um, there are several ways that fake news organizations, fake people who are doing fake news or fake news bots do this where they are combining um, a, something, uh, a name of a town and then something that sounds newspapery, mm -hmm. um, like even in the last one, like the AH Tribune or things like that, it makes it sound legitimate. Or they take um, an actual news source like abc.com and add a little extra to the end and say .co, so they kind of co-opt the name and have it close to it but not exactly, so that they're able to spread fake news in a way that people think that it is legitimate, that's coming from a legitimate source. Um, Any questions about that before we move forward? Cool. So, information overload. Um, how much, how, how many hours a day do you think you spend consuming media? Media of all kinds. A couple hours a week. A couple hours? Like, yeah, okay. hours okay. Yeah. I mean, not all at the same time, but you know. <laughs> sure. Like, in between. <laughs> yeah. like, but I mean, cumulatively, probably. Yeah. What about you? Me? Yeah, I'd say like probably four or more. Four or more? Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, more than two hours. More than two? Three or four. Okay. David? I was going to say like four or five. Do we have any thoughts from Hannah? Okay. Um, so it is actually 11. <laughs> 11 hours per day consuming media, which includes TV, video games, radio, tablet, smartphone, computer. Yeah, like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, think about like how much time you spend at your computer at, at work alone. Yeah. And then when you're walking, you're on your phone. Uh, and then when you're in your car, you're listening to things, so 11 hours. So that means you are awash in media. It's just coming at you all the time. Um, so even if you're usually good at vetting news that you read, so often you're like, oh, I heard it on the internet. I read it on the internet somewhere. Like, I heard that somewhere. Like, it rings a bell. But you don't remember exactly where. And so that can cause the spread of misinformation or make you think that something is true when it actually isn't because it rings a bell somewhere. Um, and if you find yourself in a particular pocket of the internet due to algorithms, um, you can, f uh, like say, um, I was a little worried about this when I was looking up some of the, the fake news articles um, that we had, uh, or uh, one of them was from Infowars. And I was worried that, oh, am I going to start seeing ads and media and cookies and things based on my search history? Uh, and if you, I, I think I mentioned, um, I liked one of Elizabeth Warren's tweets, and then 
I started seeing ads everywhere for Elizabeth Warren. And so this is how our internet environment works now. And if you start seeing something over and over and over and over, your perspective may start to change unconsciously because, oh, I've, I've seen it multiple times and this is what my reality looks like. It's through the window of this screen. Um, do you have any examples of that happening to you at all where like you started to see something more and more and more? Oh, it happens, I mean, it happens so much that mm -hmm. it's hard to even recount. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Was your mind ever potentially changed or you started to be like, oh, maybe this is true? Uh, not really. I mean, mm -hmm. good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I sort of get suspicious. Good. Um, Valerie, you had an example, right? right? Yeah, so something that happens to me all the time because I'm very involved in the political debate around climate change, so like that is floods all of my social media all the time. And so there's all, all these doomsday article headings I'm always being consumed with. Mm -hmm. And so like, they're depressing, they're hard to read, to the point where I've gotten to where like, I just read the headings now, and then I get upset, and then I keep moving because I'm too exhausted to move mentally when I actually read the article and find out like, what is the science behind this? Is any of this actually true? Mm -hmm. And so I don't do my homework, I don't do the backup, and so I just get sad and start to believe all the doomsday sources just because that's what I'm consumed with all the time. Mm -hmm. And I see so many. And especially because they, they have clickbaity titles. Oh yeah. Where they are the entire thing is just uh, trying to evoke an emotional reaction in you, so you will click on it. Um, I've actually noticed. Uh, I've started listening to news on the radio and avoiding news on social media. And since doing that, I actually feel less stressed out because you get a fuller picture when you listen to the entire article. You hear one side, but then you hear the other side, as opposed to, this horrible thing is happening, scream into the void about it. Um, it actually shows you that there are counter movements going on in, in multiple directions or multiple sides to a story. Um, but yeah, so it is really important to be able to uh, think critically about how you are getting this giant waterfall of media, because it can be dangerous. Um, let me just make sure I don't have anything else. So the algorithms, uh, just to kind of dive into that a little more, um, help promote the most clicked on items to the top of search results. So when you search in Google, it's not the best item that comes up, but it's the most popular. Um, and it also tries to customize things based on what they think that you will like and click on. So it will completely avoid telling you th uh, articles that might disagree with you. So this is one of the reasons why we are potentially in this divided nation where it seems like we're living in two different worlds. Um, and both sides are like, how, I don't understand you, how do you think this way? And it's because we are seeing completely different media streams. Oops. So, where do you get your news? Where do you get your news, Dave? Uh, I listen to NPR in the morning. Yay. And I do read a lot of news articles on Facebook. I don't, I try not to click on them because I'm trying not to become part of the algorithm. Right. However, <laughs> it doesn't always work. So uh, I consume some news on Facebook and I try to listen to NPR in the mornings before I look at Facebook so that mm -hmm. I can start the day grounded with <laughs> maybe things that maybe my friends are not sharing with Doomsday articles. I see a lot of the same articles Valerie was talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I'm on Reddit, that's where the problem is. Yeah, Reddit is where a lot of that happens. <laughs> well, like, I love my dad. And I can't not follow my dad on uh, Facebook, but he is hardcore uh, liberal, and so he will post uh, articles from like Alternet and things yeah. like that, where it's just it's a lot and it's super stressful. So I am very glad when I go to NPR and I'm like, oh, okay, this is actually what's happening, as opposed to this like, and it's still not great, but. If there's gray, um, like, like oftentimes there will be an article that's like, 
this thing was in, uh, was put to the floor of the house and making it seem like it was passed into law where actually someone just proposed it. Um, and like the nuance is lost in those clickbaity headlines. Um, where else do you get your news? I mostly go to NPR because I, yeah. I just simply can't. It's nice. Um, um, <laughs> I, you know, I just can't. I look at too much of the articles and you know they're there was a time I was getting one friend of mine who's very, you know, Fox News and mm -hmm. all this, put the story oh, put the story out there about um, how this was when Obama was, you know, towards the end of his, you know, it was during the last election and how he had um, sold all of our most sensitive military planes mm -hmm. to Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. He had handed them all of our defense technology, all mm -hmm. that stuff. And my stepson is in the Marines, right? Uh huh. And it was, it was his mom who was doing this. And so his mom called my husband and said, did you know? <laughs> she said, oh. So my husband being very, very skeptical of everything called my stepson and mm -hmm. said, Jonathan, I know this cannot possibly be true. Mm -hmm. And of course he said, I don't know where she's getting her information. She said, you think that the military would mutiny over something like this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So um, it's very, very hard. And so it's, you know, you, it's the extremism on that shows up on yeah. Facebook is sometimes, and they're getting really refined. Yeah. So that it's sort of like these phishing campaigns that you get on your computer. Mm -hmm. They're starting to get so sophisticated that they can put an extreme story in such a way that it sounds a lot milder than it is mm -hmm. and, you know, can have you really thinking that this is kind of happening. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you said something interesting that I'm going to, to talk about in just a second, and I'll, I'll call back to that. Um, but one, one more thing about this is also something to consider is um, I started listening to the BBC News and realized there is so much going on, not in the United States right now. Right. And so a lot of US media is so US focused. Um, and so we even kind of self-censor that way, where even if we're looking at legitimate news sources uh, in the United States, that there's an entire world out there that is not being reported on by a lot of news outlets, or at least not making it front page headlines, things that we would see. Um, so things to think about. So Hannah shared that um, she likes to go to NPR too. It's a pretty mm -hmm. good source. And um, sometimes podcasts, and then sometimes things from Facebook, but that she tries to censor the clickbaits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or tries to be conscious of them. And I love that so many of us in the room uh, are are conscious of it and trying to get our news from, from regular sources, but this is what it, this is not what it, this is what it looks like. Um, uh, for most of the United States where we are increasingly getting our news from social media. Um, and then of course with that comes the, the number of people who are afraid of fake news. They are concerned about the influence of fake news on voters and elections in the United States as of June 2018. And it's here. And it's everywhere. Everyone is terrified right now, not just one side or the other. They're worried about the other side doing it to them. Like, everyone is scared. And so we need to be able to know how to make our decisions based on truth and not um, not what we fear or what we hope. Um, so what is fake news? I mean, a lot of it is, it can be one of two things, I think. It can be something that looks, it can be from, it can be extrapolated from an event that happened, but it's not actually the event itself, and they turn it into something else. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and it's so psychologically linked to that very thing that you were talking about, I've heard it before, mm -hmm. or it's just all, it's just totally all out fake. It's, it, it has 
no basis at all in any previous event, but it draws on enough, it draws on enough that's real mm -hmm. that it sounds like it, something is real. Yeah. Any other, any other thoughts on what fake news might be? It is made with the intention. Oh, made with intention? As opposed to perhaps some misinformation, which is just uh, a mistake. Yeah. yeah. Or to um, um, spread the news uh, in favor of their like position, like mm -hmm. political party, or some like interest, their interest. To be able to influence mm -hmm. people, maybe. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts? Okay. <laughs> I said it. Cool. Um, so. Strictly speaking, fake news is completely made up and designed to deceive readers to maximize traffic and profit. Mm -hmm. So uh, more clicks on the website, and then that, that means more eyes on the advertisements for that website. Mm -hmm. But the definition is often expanded to include websites that circulate distorted, contextualized, or dubious information through, for example, clickbaiting headlines that don't reflect the facts of the story or undeclared bias. So there's a lot of gray area when it comes to fake news, where um, in a news article in itself could be true, but it's misrepresented mm -hmm. in some way, or it is slanted to advantage a certain group. Um, Let me just make sure I have everything in here. Yeah, cool. So these are different types of fake news. Um, bias news, satire, like The Onion. How many people have accidentally shared an Onion article? Yeah. Do you know The Onion? Yeah. The sat satiric newspaper. Though I, I started to see these, these wonderful um, comparisons online, where it was like, here's The Onion article that came out a bunch of years ago, and here's the actual thing that's happening right now. Uh, yeah, that's fun. Um, <laughs> clickbait. Conspiracy um, is something that is misleading, or it could be just straight up fake. Um, so, how can you tell if what you are reading is fake news? How, how do you vet things? So one of the ways that I try to avoid fake news is by going to sources that I, that I trust. Mm -hmm. Things like NPR, um, BBC, Al Jazeera, mm -hmm. sources that I know are at least not going to be selling me things that are completely not based on reality, even mm -hmm. if there's a political slant to what they write or what the person is saying. Mm -hmm. At least I know that it's not just going to be like 12 senators with fake names. Right. Right. <laughs> right. So you just, you just start out by making sure that what you consume is mm -hmm. from legitimate sources. Mm -hmm. What about um, if you stumble across something on your friend's Twitter? How, how do you know? How do you know how to check if it's fake or real? Hannah mentioned that she likes to check the sources and the links in the articles, kind of mm -hmm. like backing up the research and uh, look, looking at the author. Yeah, absolutely. Checking the author, making sure that they have the authority to write this article or if they even exist. Any other thoughts? I usually try to keep a um, wide range of sources from across the spectrum mm -hmm. that I trust. Yeah. And my experience has been that when they start all agreeing with each other on something, that's when there is some, you know, something is going on. Right, the Venn diagram of. Right, true. Right. And so if, like, sometimes, uh, you know, some friends, friends of mine who love conspiracy theories <laughs> will, you know, send me this conspiracy theory in this, you know, Facebook group. Yeah. And it's so ridiculous that, you know, so I go and I look at all the main, like the Washington Post, the New York Times, I, I search everywhere for mm -hmm. something about this particular thing that they keep telling me is going on. Mm -hmm. And I go first to the sources that it could come from, mm -hmm. like um, one of the worst defenders of these bizarre conspiracy theories is the um, several of the Christian broadcasting networks. Mm. And so there was, for a while, there was this big conspiracy theory about how Hillary Clinton was involved
involved in a pedophilia ring in the basement of that pizza place. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so instead of just immediately, what I what I did was I not only couldn't find it anywhere, even on Fox News. Mm -hmm. I went back to my friend and I said, you know what? This is nowhere to be found. So you triangulate your sources. You I triangulate the sources. sources and I say, you know, if I can't find it here, yeah. And if, if, if indeed she had a pedophilia ring, do you think that this would not end up in the, in, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, yeah, but, but, you know, some people, you can tell them everything and they will still hold on, which is a great segue into how you can spot fake news and the very first step of examining personal One of the things that you said um, previously when you were talking about, uh, I, which one was it? Um, the, the military selling those things. You said, I knew that couldn't possibly be true, which is an interesting statement. Um, because one of the tests that I like to do, that I've, I've started to do, because um, is, is to check and see, like, okay, if I read this headline and I switched the name to somebody I didn't agree with, would I still believe it? Uh, it's, it's uh, I think, something that both sides of the aisle should examine um, as we are all seeking truth. Like, so the first thing we think about is, like, what emotions does this article evoke in me? And examine those. Like, is it, does it make me angry? Does it make me scared? Does it make me happy that th this happened? Are you hoping that the content turns out to be true or, or not? And what does that mean? And consider counter opinions or counter arguments. Like, okay, if this is true, if somebody I disagree with fundamentally did a good thing, what does that mean? Or if somebody that I really like did a bad thing, what does that mean? Could you consider that, like, the people are pushing back against this thing I believe in? for legitimate reasons? And what are those reasons? Because I firmly believe that the only way that this country can move forward is through everybody listening to the legitimate needs of each other and coming to a way that, that all concerns can be vetted and valid and come up with a plan that considers all of them, mm -hmm. as opposed to, well, anything you say is wrong and racist, or anything you say is wrong and uh, is stomping on our freedoms, like, we have to come together. So, and the first way that we do that is being like, okay, where am I coming from emotionally? Where are these, um, where are our emotions possibly clouding my search for truth? And the, I think we came across, I think it was MIT, though, a study oh, yeah. they did in which, while this is the thing that we should be doing, they did a study in which they presented someone with a evidence counter to their views, and instead of changing their views, they held even stronger to the views. So even though they were given evidence that what they were thinking was wrong, the majority of the participants held fast and that and more and believed their views stronger, giving counter evidence. Yeah. Um. So. Why might we have a personal bias? Why might these things exist within us? Life experiences. Life experiences. What kind of life experiences? Like you're raised in a certain environment, you form opinions based on bad encounters you've had over time, mm -hmm. just so many different events and things that have happened to you. You form all your biases. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you may not even know that they're there. Any other thoughts on why we might? Yeah, the thing is that like human beings just to survive are wired to see patterns. And so our brains are like, okay, well this thing happened to me. And so thus in all cases, this must be true. Um, or like, this is the color of this person that did this thing. And so it accidentally or like inadvertently kind of colors how you see interactions in the 
and you may not know it. So it is important to examine those things. Um, let's see. So confirmation bias uh, leads people to put more stock in information that confirms their beliefs and discounts information that opposes them. So we got to be careful about that. Um, da, da, da. Just want to make sure I have everything on this page. This is very important. Yeah, so make sure that you know your own feelings. Like, first examine, like, this is what I'm feeling. So I acknowledge it. And then are able to separate it from evaluating the truth of the article's content. Address this first, and then we can move on to the rest of the thing. So only then can we be truly objective in our analysis. So next, consider the source. This is something we've talked about before. Um, is it well known? Uh, how does the site describe itself in the about section? Do other articles published in that site seem reliable? Um, read laterally about the news. So many fake news sites um, use uh, the, the fake uh, kind of address to make it seem legitimate. Um, you also have to examine what everybody is saying is reliable sources and what are not. Because two weeks ago, the Tennessee House um, put forth uh, a resolution in the, the State House um, that CNN and Washington Post be classified as fake news, which is not, not great. Um, but as you can see, like lawmakers are now trying to decree what is fake news and what is not fake news. Um, so you have to be careful about that. Is there anything else you wanted to say about that? Time check. Oh. Cool. Um, so read beyond the headlines. Does the content match the headline? Uh, what kind of content is it? Is it news, opinion, satire? Because so many people are like, this is from the Washington Post, but it's an editorial. So it is an opinion. And think about what its purpose is. Is it trying to convince you of something? Is it trying to sell you something? Or simply to inform you? Then check the author. Does the author have a byline? Um, who is the author? Who do they work for? And are they qualified to speak on the topic? So always dig a little deeper there. And then, of course, like we said, investigate supporting sources. Does the story cite a variety of sources? Are these sources official and expert? Does the information appear in reports from other news outlets, and are you able to verify the images? Um, let's see, I just want to see. So, in verifying the images, a lot of the, 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 the fake news out there is video now. Um, for example, uh, Donald Trump tweeted this video of Nancy Pelosi tearing up the State of the Union after he introduced each of the kind of American heroes that he talked about in his State of the Union address. So it made it look like her tearing up the State of the Union was in reaction to the contributions that each of these individuals made. Um, and that was through editing. He just changed the order of events. When, if you read laterally, if you were able to see that, that video in other places, you could see when it actually happened at the end of the State of the Union. Um, there's also deep fake videos, which are terrifying. Um, I don't know that we have time to show. Maybe at the end. Maybe at the end, okay. There is an amazing deep fake video out there that is joyful and not scary, but also a little scary, where it is casting, um, help. Robert Downey Jr. Robert, Robert, Tom Holland. Robert Downey Jr. and Tom Holland in Back to the Future. So it takes a scene from Back to the Future and puts Tom Holland and Robert Downey Jr.'s faces on Doc and Marty, uh, and has them go through the scene, and you believe it. You're like, yes, obviously, this is how it was originally cast. Uh, and it's scary and fun, but also scary. Um, so that's, that's one of the difficulties is that, like, well, you can't say anymore, like, well, it's a video, I can see it, because videos can be defaced. You have to be extra careful with visual evidence. Um, anything else on that before we? Steam power through. Um, check the date. Is the date current? Are the sources used current? Um, how many people have seen the shark swimming down the highway picture? Yeah. So after.
after every major flood, there is this picture of, oh my God, it flooded so much that a shark is swimming down the highway. <laughs> but it, was, it actually appeared after um, flooding in Puerto Rico, and it was a photoshopped image then. So it just keeps appearing after every major flood. So make sure that what you're looking at is even from the thing that it says it is. Um, na -na -na. Cool. Boom. Um, now, this is the big thing. Checking for it. So we examined our own personal bias. Now we're checking by it in the article itself. If the writers or the publishers were biased. Is the language or imagery loaded or sensational? Is there unfair blame placed on one person, group, or cause? And what seems to be the purpose of the article? Um, does, it, does it try to convince you of something? So these are different ways that it could exist. These are different ways that it could exist. So bias by headline, how they talk about something. Bill Cosby's sex assault trial judge allows only one other accuser to testify, not 13. So it's trying to make you feel a certain kind of way about it. Uh, whereas this one says, judge allows testimony of another accuser in Cosby case. That is a little more neutral. Um, we have bias by omission, by selection and omission. So if someone is giving a speech and people boo in the middle of the speech, do you include that? Do you not? And the people who do include it may be trying to show exactly what happened, but they may also be trying to influence, like thinking about what people include. Um, hmm. uh, bias through placement. So what's on the front cover versus what's on page 27. So Tiger Woods, this is on the front cover. Uh, but the Republican National Convention begins on page 26. And so they are prioritizing Tiger Woods over the Republican National Convention. Um, and so you may not even know that it's in there if you see this in the grocery store. Um, and then bias by photos, captions, and camera angles. Do you want to talk about this more efficiently? Oh, I can talk about this. You talk about this. Um, so here was a big viral news thing that happened in the past year, and this image was spread widely. But shortly, well not shortly after, a little bit after, more journalists did more digging, and a full like, a two hour video came out of actually everything that happened. And it puts it in a lot different position of what all was happening than just this one image. Like you see this image, it, it makes you feel emotions, but then if you do have the time to watch mm -hmm. a two-hour video, you're going to feel differently. There's a it's a more complex situation with like a third group. So there's there was the March for Life. There was also the Indigenous Peoples March, and then there was a third group of people who was initially harassing the boys on the right for the the March for Life um, that sparked off the entire encounter. Um, and so there's a lot more gray area than just what one image shows. Um, they, this was initially tweeted as um, this MAGA loser gleefully bothering a Native American protester at the Indigenous Peoples March. So it contextualizes it in a very specific way. Uh, and if that's all you see, then that's all that you will potentially receive about it. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, Bias through use of names and titles. Um, so when Jeff Sessions was appointed attorney general, career racist Jeff Sessions is Donald Trump's pick for attorney general. Trump picks Sessions for attorney general. And then he, over here he's called Senator Jefferson Beauregard Sessions III. So there are three very different pictures being um, uh, explored uh, and painted through that. And then bias by choice of words. This article is in Time Magazine, and it says, Fishing for Donations, House Speaker Denny Hastert led 35 donors last Monday on a pre-dawn fly fishing excursion in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. Each donor got a personal guide from the local Trout Unlimited. Minimum donation, $5,000. Number of fish caught, one. So it's trying to be funny. It's trying to make a joke about the value of the fish uh, and the value of his campaign, but it is also in a legitimate 
news article and is trying to influence how you see this person as a lock and stock. Um, step eight, so that was all by it. <laughs> and then consult the experts. So think about what fact checkers say, what bias checkers say. We're gonna give you a handout at the end with all of these on it. Um, and then what can you find from your library or librarians? Because that's why we're here. Um, cool. Do we have enough time for the activity? About 12 minutes. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do a speed activity. Um, let's get two groups in the room. Do you guys mind pairing up? And then. Oh, okay. And you guys can do it. Um, I would like you to quickly read an article, probably not one of the longer ones, no. um, and then see if you can figure out kind of if it's fake news, if it isn't, if it isn't, what kind of nuance does it have to maybe make it biased or not, or is it legitimate? Um, and we'll we'll go for five minutes. You don't necessarily have to fill out the entire paper. Just write down your thoughts. Um, the InfoWars thing is huge. Oh, so we won't do that. What about the digital twins? Yeah, that's fine. Um, take maybe five minutes, read over the article, discuss with each other, answer some of the questions, and then we'll come back together. One of you had this group right here, yeah? You had the, the seven spinners and the fidget spinners? That was, that was you. Sorry. Uh, so what are your thoughts? So um, one of the questions on here is what is your immediate emotional reaction? And this article is about senators playing with fidget spinners and stress balls during the impeachment trial. Yes. And our immediate emotional reaction was like, oh, what? Changed. Who cares? Like, <laughs> the, that, we wrote, who cares, not cares. Like, mm -hmm. our immediate emotional reaction was like, why should we care if they have fidget spinners <laughs> during the impeachment trial? That's so funny because my immediate reaction when I first heard that was anger. Really? Yeah. Because, like, it, uh, they also talk about people reading and things oh, like yeah. that. And I'm like, this is an important, like, you want to hear the arguments. It, ah. But that was my, like, I acknowledge that that was, like, mm -hmm. where I came from initially. But I think you had a really good point when you said your emotional reaction was, they're telling us about this to make us feel like the impeachment trial is a joke. Mm -hmm. It comes from Fox News, and one of the other questions on here is like, does Fox News have connections to places that might indicate a certain bias? And, mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if I'm characterizing your thoughts. Oh no, no, right, perfectly, right? perfectly. But like that was yeah. kind of our takeaway. Was like they're trying to tell us that like these people are playing with fidget spinners because they're being the adults in the room. Mm -hmm. Like they're so like this is so dumb that they have to like distract themselves. Mm -hmm. Sort of our takeaway from mm -hmm. the tone of the article. Which included a lot of screenshots from Twitter as well. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, uh, any other thoughts on that? So is it is it fake news? Um, it's hard to it's hard to say, but I tend to think that it probably isn't. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason I think that is that. There were other sources that were making reference to this, mm -hmm. not as the primary mm -hmm. piece of this story, but as a side note to show how the partisanship of the proceedings, you know, it used it as an emphasis to show how the partisanship was expressing itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say if we contextualized truth, Mm -hmm. Is fake news? Then yes. <laughs> yes. And because I, this happened. Yeah. Right. So like, it's not like they just like made it up. It's not twelve right. centimeters of space aliens. It's not the same sort of mm -hmm. thing. But one of my questions is like, do they always have fidget spinners and stress balls available? And they just happen to break them out during this, or is this a new thing for this? Mm -hmm. There's nothing about what's happening at the impeachment trial in the article. It's just about fidget spinners. I don't care about that. So like, hey. this like decontextualizing of right. what's going on is like right. it's misleading. At least. Mm -hmm. So potentially it, it is factual, but the slant that they put on it maybe haven't maybe has an agenda. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and the other one was which one? The Overland. The Overland. Up, up, up. Overland. Okay, so Overland College students protest culturally appropriative dining hall food. What did you think? Is it fake news? Or what, what were your general thoughts on the article? Um, well, I guess I'll say I don't necessarily think I would classified as fake news, maybe more of just one-sided bias, mm -hmm. but again, this would be something that you would want to fact check because they quote, I think at least, they quote at least one person in here, mm -hmm. so it would be interesting to see if there were any published articles after that where the guy's like, no, I didn't say that, mm -hmm. so that's something to look into, but I think it has merit. Interesting. As far as existing. Yeah. One of the questions in the worksheet uh, is, does the article cite a variety of sources? Uh -huh. So, yeah, I think it has a problem in that. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, it shows up only one side of the story. Mm -hmm. So I thought it, I don't know if it is a real, real news or fake news, but it's written uh, now by professionals. Mm. Interesting. Do you want to talk about this one? Yeah. You got it. So this one was a big article that led to a lot of like think pieces. Mm -hmm. And then probably a year or two afterwards, people actually followed up and looked at the journalism behind it. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't necessarily fake, but the journalism was very badly and very poorly done. Yeah. The one person cited was the one person that complained. Mm -hmm. So like as an entire college, there was one person that complained about like the taste of the sushi. Okay. And then it caused all this like outrage online about mm -hmm. cultural appropriation and students massively protesting mm -hmm. when it was this one singular yeah. Yeah. student. But and it was, wasn't fake. The student said this. Yeah, but it was the, it it um, exploded into outrage on both sides of mm -hmm. the issue. Cool. Um, so I just want to give you a few tools to make sure that your news diet is healthy, clean, and non-biased. Um, things that you can do, beware of online filter bubbles, make sure that you read from a variety of places. Um, think critically, use uh, Mason Library's resources and subscriptions, and do you want to talk about... Yeah, so if there's one thing you could do to combat fake news, or to combat the bubble that you find yourself in online, is when you're browsing, using, you know, Google Chrome, whatever it is you use, go in incognito mode, so that it doesn't know it's you, it doesn't know what articles you click on on Facebook, it doesn't know what you usually Google, so like it's not feeding you back things that you want to look at. It's feeding you everything because it doesn't know you, you're new. Yes, um, and I don't know if you have ever seen this before, but it, it, it's really helpful. And it changes, this is a media bias chart, this is version 5.1, but it takes uh, different um, media outlets and then ranks them um, most extreme left to most extreme right. And then these are like the most reliable for news and then as we get down, it's less reliable. Um, so like over here, we could have most extreme right and this is still slightly reliable where this is less. So, um, so when you see an article come up on uh, Facebook, you can check the media bias chart maybe to see where it lands and try to keep your media diet somewhere around here. Ooh. I know that we probably kept you over by two minutes, but we did. <laughs> um, any questions? No? Was this helpful? Very. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Great. Um, did you learn something that you can take away and immediately apply? That is all I ask. <laughs> that is all I care about. Thank you very much. Of course. Thank you.